Okay, I wonder if we can get this party started now. Let me see if this is a bit better for you guys. Let me know. Checking out your comments now. This party started now. Okay, cool. I could hear myself. That means it's working. Beautiful, beautiful. So where were we i wanted to dive in i wanted to welcome you i wanted to hear where you guys were in the soiree so here i am <laughs> uh Thibaut says this intro into the dark <laughs> exactly yep so it looks like i can't see all your comments at the same time for some reason so we're just going to start right here fresh in the moment the tantric way Thank you, Denise. <laughs> you want to go where I'm going? Well, see, I was tired of waiting for a special place to go. So I created the special place and the soiree is the place to be. So you're already there, Denise, and I'm happy to have you and everybody here. And yeah, I would love to be able to see your other comments because I felt like you guys were going to tell me where you're at in the soiree. But I'll come back to that after today's transmission. And I'm glad you guys can hear me better. And let's just dive in. So yeah, day one, it already feels like we're in the middle of it because I started the pre-party, right? And many of you are definitely getting in and digging deep and that's just been really rewarding and to see where it is that you know you guys are getting in your own way and i am not a stranger to this experience of getting in my own way and so what i love about the tantric art of life and business is that it is an ongoing practice so it's not like you get there. <laughs> We're not trying to get anywhere. We are here. We are exactly where we need to be. And it's from that place, that zero point of creation, that you can actually blow your mind. And for many of you that have been in my world, you've watched me do this time and time again. And for those of you who've been in VIP containers with me, you know that I let you see behind the scenes. You know that I let you see some of the blood, sweat, and tears, and it doesn't make it any less, what's the word, joyful or um, euphoric. It's just that those are places where my conditioning needed to go, that I needed to shed and shed them, I do. So one of the things that, you know, came up for me when I was choosing to run this event is, well, why Tantra? Why am I choosing to share Tantra? And looking at it a little bit deeper for myself, um, you know, I, I really thought about the impact that it's had on my life. And so there was a turn on for me to share this. I mean, that's really the only reason you need when you're doing your own events and your own programs and offerings. You simply need to tune in to what is alive for you and where is the edge for you. And so this is me walking my talk. There was an edge here and there was a huge turn on to share what you know hasn't really, whoops, hit the wrong button, hasn't been shared yet. So, um, oh good, my phone decided to work. I can now see your comments. And so I think what happened is they got too hot when I was outside. <laughs> Perfect theme, right? <laughs> Everything was getting way too hot <laughs> in the Arizona heat. For me, it feels delicious. I love being in the heat. I love being outside. We can turn the volume up. We can turn the heat up. And we can bring it, but my, my devices were not having it. So anyway, back to the, to the Tantra art and, and why I'm really choosing to share this with you is because of the impact that it's had on my life and the ways that it has 
opened so much in me to be able to keep going deeper and wider and to the next layer and, you know, like peeling an onion. Right. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm ex super excited to share it with you. And I've made quite a bit of uh, notes because it was a turn on me to turn on for me rather to like heart dump all over the page. And of course, being completely present and with you and here, we may or may not get to any of that. And I'm okay with that because as an artist and, a, and someone who loves the collaborative arts and performing arts and installation art, it's like everything gets to be in real time and everything is a masterpiece here. So we will create exactly what we're meant to create in the moment, whether or not we get to all the mind generated things. So yeah, lots of goodies outlined for you and, and we will get through them and to them at exactly the right time throughout the week, which means there may or may not be bonus calls. And for those of you who have not yet seen the welcome video, I do describe Tantra as um, a continuing process. And that's actually the literal translation in Sanskrit. So as you can imagine, as an artist who then started approaching this tantric lifestyle and yes it started with sex and it started with a relationship and it it was that was the place but when you when you do one thing it translates to all of your life right so for me that was a place where just i had already been an artist who was very in, interested in the process more than the product and like a lover of abstract art and a art therapist, it was all about the process for me. So it was a natural place for me to go to heal and deepen my own sexuality. And so this huge impact that I'm talking about that it had on me really started with the no. And it sounds very mm, simple or basic, but literally the more basic you can get in your life, the, the simpler it is, the closer you are to the truth of your genius. Because it's when you complicate things with all of these mental constructs that you actually get lost in the weeds. And I've seen it from most of you who are you know, already participating in the pre-party where you can make things really, really complicated that don't need to be complicated at all. And it's because of you know the conditioning, we all go to school and are educated and um, taught that we need all of this concept and theory and construct, et cetera. But we're really unlearning all of that on, when, you're, when you're on a spiritual path and you're doing the spiritual journey, it's about unlearning all of that so you can get to the true essence of you. This has been something that I've been doing for a long time and I've just taken different paths. And this is just one of the frames, if you will, the Tantra frame that I personally think captures the essence of this creative process of life. You know, your life is your art. And so when I first started this Tantric practice, you know, really, I wasn't very comfortable in my own skin. I was getting more comfortable in my own skin, but my lack of intimacy with myself very much impacted my relationship. That relationship was with, you know, my ex who he was a therapist at the time as well. We, we pretty much just ended up having boring ass sex and, and a boring ass life at one point because the chemistry was dying and that had everything to do with me not being able to communicate my no and not just in the bedroom, right? Like we also shared business things. We, we did couples retreats together. There were places where I wasn't communicating my no in the bedroom and the boardroom. And there is nothing worse than pretending to be in to a boring ass sex relationship, life, et cetera. And your business and your sales are exactly the same. So the spots where you are pretending that you're really turned on because you think you should be doing these things is an absolute, like, what's the word? Boner killer. Like, that's the biggest turnoff. Now, so for some of you, if you have had sexual trauma or you've 
um, not dove into the intimacy with yourself as deep as you could. Sometimes my language might even feel triggering to you. And that's a really good place to be curious. And for others of you, if you feel like you've done some of this work and yet you're still kind of hovering, there are places where you can still go deeper into yourself and the intimacy with you so that you really tune into what is actually alive for you. What is your actual edge in the moment? Not just based on what you think you should do. And, and just because you can do it doesn't mean you should, right? So my understanding really like at the most basic level of this lifestyle is radical acceptance like that that's not necessarily a, a tantric practice that they don't use that word per se but you know a lot of this stuff is um language has its limitations and so there are many places that call it very different things depending on what frame you're putting on it and in in my experience this idea of radical acceptance is literally the ability to be with anything in your life and not make it mean anything about you. So whatever your external situation circumstance is right now, it just is. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. And when you start attaching meaning to it, especially negative meaning and shadow beliefs about, you know, you're incompetent or suck or not good enough or whatever those shame stories are, those need to go. And within those stories is actually your gold and the spot in which you get to share from and from your power, start moving more and more into your brilliance and touching your genius. So I'm just going to pause there for a minute. I was still trying to see the comments. They come and go. Oh, there they are. Okay. So cool. I'm just catching up where. Um, right. So I'm just going to agree with you, Denise, where you said I'm the queen of complicating and you're not the only one, right? Like there's a reason that I'm the one teaching this right now. I have a history of overcomplicating things. I, I have a million ideas, right? That Saboteur Magician channel is very uh, strong at times. And the way, around, like the way to catch it and choose differently is simply noticing. And that's what's so beautiful about the tantric lifestyle is there is literally no right or wrong. So if I liken this to sex, it's like you, you could, uh, and I was having this conversation with Amber recently on my wall where you could literally have a turn on to be close to someone. And that literally means nothing you don't attach meaning to it. It doesn't mean that you're, you're going to have sex. It doesn't mean that you necessarily want to kiss them. It doesn't mean that you want them to touch you. Like all of that could be off the table. You're just following the present aliveness, which is to be in close proximity to someone. Now, when there's an assumption that that automatically means that you're going to, you know, kiss them or hug them or, or have sex with them or get naked or whatever, it creates a pressure in you. And that pressure, I'm saying that that pressure, assuming that there's shadow there. If you have no shadow there, then there's no pressure. But if there is, you've already created this pressure by going into the future, by letting your mind go into the future. So if you can stay present, even if there's a lot of tension in your body or, or aliveness in your body that feels like a big energy, that is the place to stay. You're not trying to get any further than right here. And that is what I mean by being blindfolded for your pleasure. It's like the example that I shared with you guys here. I dumped a bunch of uh, thoughts and, and insights and awarenesses and things that were coming to me throughout the week. I just kept putting them in a document as a heart dump and literally knew that I may or may not say any of it. And if you can show up to anything with that level of wonder and curiosity, I wonder how this is going to go. I wonder what I'm going to talk about. 
I wonder how, if anybody else is going to show up. I wonder if anybody's going to participate. Like none of that actually matters. The answer doesn't matter. But if you stay in the state of wonder, that anticipation is the tension that actually allows you to enjoy the present and simply move from your turn on. So I know many of you have been complicating things by trying to see 10 to 100 steps ahead and you literally only need the next step. So just catching up on your, um, your comments here. And again, if you have questions anywhere, please feel free to ask. So I'm reading Thiva's complication is the ability to jump from one dimension to the other in order to avoid touching the next level ahead of you. Smart people are good at that. Yeah. Yeah. Like some of the most intelligent people that I know are so stuck in, you know, intellectualization, what we call saboteur. And it's because there is a heart protection there. So I'm going to speak to you guys just a little bit more about my experience of um, the beginning of Tantra for me. Because truly, truly, I had to turn the dial way down on what was a turn on. Meaning the idea of something can be incredibly alluring if you're disconnected from your body. The idea of it is hot, but the actual thing when you're connected to your body may be extraordinarily disgusting. It may be a huge turnoff. So this is what it means to be really, really tapped into the present moment so you're not denying your feelings in any way. So when I introduced the idea of Tantra, it was with my, my, my ex that I was talking about, and he had no interest whatsoever in going near there. And this desire for me to have conscious connection and um, non-objective sex, if you will, <laughs> I've never used that term before. It just came through, but there's an art form called non-objective art where you're literally not trying to create any thing. It's just an expression of the present moment. And it was a deviation from, you know, figurative art and representational art. And that is exactly what tantric lifestyle is. You are not trying to create something other than now. And the present moment now tells you exactly what the next now is going to be. You know, like one moment you're peeing, the next moment you're getting water, whatever. But the thing is, is that I had, because I had lived in my mind so much, the idea of certain things was really hot. But then when I actually got myself into those scenarios, it was like, whoa, I, I just want to take this down like a hundred notches. Like, can we just lay here? <laughs> can, can we just lay here and breathe? Would that be okay? Like that was the turn on, you know? And it started with me saying, no, I'm not, I'm not I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to go there right now. No, I don't want to do. And like being with someone who was willing to follow that no until they hit the sweetest spot of yes, that is what imperial standards are. When you are willing to say no, 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 not that, not that, not that, not that. And that, that really, uh, to be honest with you, this journey for me started even before Tantra with the practice of essentialism. Some of you may know that term. And it's the concept coming from a mental construct, you know, it was a gateway into the more embodied uh, practice of it. But essentialism is basically, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no, right? So it's a portal into doing this in an embodied way. And it's a really great starting point if you're not yet in, you know, connected fully to your body. That's a good, that's a good spot to start like eliminating all the things that are dying and turn offs. And so I'm sharing that with you here because it also applies, you know, not just to your relationships, not just to your sex, 
also to your own sensuality. There could be things that you are doing in your life that you think you should be doing. Exercise is a great example of this, where you're pushing past something that's actually alive for you. And that would be the mental, right? Like that would be the idea of it's hot, but is it actually alive in your body? And these are the places that you really get to start exploring on a deeper level. If you've already been exploring this, great. You're going deeper and wider this week. And if this is all new territory for you, fantastic. Dip your toe in and, um, and start paying attention to how that also applies to your business and your sales and your outreach and what was coming up in, in the group on the day one of the pre-party were things like, you know, ads and websites and landing pages and those kinds of things like your body's always telling you what's alive and that is a that's the spot for you to listen so again just to reiterate the radical acceptance is a place where i can't uh, emphasize it enough for you to be with what is right here and what is without making it mean anything, without adding a story that it means something about you or that the external is somehow any reflection about you and even your past, right? Because your current reality is simply a reflection of um, previous beliefs and previous uh, choices, behaviors, actions. And so there's like an echo effect between what you maybe once believed and therefore acted upon and decisions you made, it gets manifested. And then this is the reality that you're living now. That means that you can also alter the external reality by simply choosing not to add any of those beliefs and, and negative shadow conditioned programming to your current reality. So just not making it mean anything, you know, to say that even simpler. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's so much more <laughs> to go into here and I'm just going to pause a minute and see if you guys have any questions and also, um, share with you that I, I do have a prompt that I'm going to share later today because I want you guys, I really want you guys to be looking at where you're still shooting on yourself. I know that's kind of a cheesy saying, but it's, it actually applies here. It's like, I, I get the feeling that many of you are still doing things that you think you have to do. And when we're coming from that energy, there, there's a force there that not only kills your joy, but it's also blocking some of the results that you want. So to give you a really practical example, it's like dishes, <laughs> so silly, but I love washing the dishes, love it. And it's because I love the hot water. And that's not something that I could always say. And it was because once upon a time I was living in my head all the time. I probably didn't even notice I had fucking hands, much less hot water. And you know, the whole mindfulness journey. And I shared with you Tantra and all of that, but now in the present reality, there are times when I, still, I love washing the dishes, but if I choose to do the dishes because the dishes are dirty and I can't tolerate that there's dishes and it's, it's too gross and get away. And it's, you know, like, and I'm coming at it from that energy, then I'm not going to enjoy the thing that I actually love. Sex is the same way. Sales is the same way. So I honor right thing, right time. I honor when something feels like a no. No, that's not right now. No, I don't want to do that. Nope, I'm not going to do that. And that might mean actually doing nothing. You know, it might mean sitting outside and watching the trees or sitting inside and just being. If there's literally no thing that I am guided to do in that moment. And that is a powerful place for things to drop in. And if there are still things that you're doing because you're afraid of only being, then you're still running and, or operating, I should say, operating from shadow. But I was also going to say running on an old operating system. 
And so these are the tiny little crevices that you get to get really intimate with yourself this week and really begin to notice all the ways that you're really, what's the word? It's almost like, it's almost like punishing yourself because you're forcing yourself to try and be a different way than you are. And that's not radical acceptance. So let me pause there for a moment. question about the curiosity and wonder is how to plan an event or even market it this way. I'm considering this with the event I'm attempting to plan. I'm aware I want to do it differently, yet it feels so foreign. Like I'd really just like to share that I'm hosting something in my home for six to eight people and see who shows up and what the hell we work on based on who shows up. So yeah, all you have to do, Denise, is decide on a theme. That's all you need. Andrea says, yes, I thought for the longest time I wanted an experience with a dom and to be dominated, but it wasn't that. It's more than ta it's more the Tantra aspect. So this is so on point for me right now. Yeah. And the truth is, is that there's a lot of places where um, like BDSM overlaps with Tantra and, and can help it and vice versa. And none of that is really even important as far as like the structure and the frame and, and the terms and all of that because when you are truly present to your own wisdom and your own knowing none of that even matters it all falls away it's like one day I'm you know could be dressed up in a role play as a call girl or something and the next day I could be dressed up like a toddler with a stuffed animal like none of it matters you just do what is a turn on for you and that applies to business as well. You know, like I'm in a beautiful gown. It's got sequins. I'm wearing diamonds and pearls. Tomorrow, I may be in my pajamas with you. Well, we don't have a call scheduled, but I might do a bonus call from my bed. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All right. So I want to read a couple of more and then... We're gonna shift gears. I'm much better at noticing uncomfortable or unwelcoming feelings and asking myself, I wonder about this, but do not dismiss yet. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Cause you don't wanna ignore them, the feelings. Um, and at the same time, you don't wanna give them the power to decide how your life and day are gonna go. Right. So as long as you guys are forcing yourself to do things, you're creating pressure. And that just feels like shit. Like, I would just rather be a cashier than an entrepreneur if, if I'm just going to push myself around and bully myself into doing, you know, things I don't want to do. And, and I'm telling you, when you do the things that you do want to do and say no to the things you don't want to do, you give yourself this incredible breathing space. And in this breathing space is the natural. And I'm not, when I say natural, I don't mean normal because everybody here is here for a reason. And it's because there is something you need to strip down. There is something you need to let go of and release in the way that you were conditioned to operate. And so therefore, when you're doing that stripping down, when you are exposing the conditioning, there is an emergence of your natural self that will tell you very clearly what the next move is. And your mind will probably want to judge it. And this is where you get to be an incredibly sharp. Um, <laughs> what are those crossing guards in, in like the school zone? You know, the, the people with the neon vests and the stop sign. You get to be that person. And you get to grab the stop tool. For those of you who don't know what the stop tool is, it's in Be Solid Gold, uh, my first book. It's also on Call of TV. 
and I put it in the group, uh, I think for Amy, I was responding to something and I'll just give it to you real quick here too, but I, I recommend that you get it so that you have the, you know, you have it listed somewhere and you can see it, but it's the, the S stands for stop. T is take a breath. O is observe what's happening internally and externally. P is pull back and alchemize. And then there's another P, which is practice makes progress. So you're always doing this. It's your lifestyle of every time you catch something, you know, trying to come up and, and, and move you over back into this conditioned way of being, you're like, no, nope, not falling for it. And you've got your little stop sign, right? And you are doing the thing opposite of what the conditioning would have you do. So if it is that the conditioning is telling you, well, you can't, you know, you can't take a nap. You can't. Um, you can't afford to take care of yourself. You need to um, hustle or whatever. It's like, no, I, I'm not buying that. That is poverty consciousness. And yes, I am going to do what is required to build this business, but I'm not going to do it from a place of lack. I'm not going to do it from a place of I can't afford to take care of myself. Well, that reminds me, I'm going to read you guys a little story before we hop off. And I know somebody was asking for the prompt. I'm going to put the prompt separate in the group. Yeah, Aaron, correct. There is no normal. And, and I will, I will uh, disagree with you a little bit when you say tension is never good. I actually believe tension is fantastic because, and for anybody here who's seen the lobster video, you guys know that tension is what allows growth. I'll probably create a resource tab in the guides and I'll drop, I really wish I had a pen right now. I will drop the lobster video, the link to the books and call a TV so you can access the stop tool. And there was something else. I think I referenced something else. Maybe not, but I was gonna say that tension, yes, Julie made a stop, <laughs> stop bookmark. Um, I think someone also made a stop bracelet before out of clay beads, but I was going to say to Aaron that it's pressure that is not so good. It's pressure, but these are, these are linguistics, right? So people use the terms differently. And the important thing to note is tension feels like an aliveness in your body. And a lot of people are very uncomfortable with the sensations in their body. So then they label that anxiety. Pressure is when you like are trying to hold something down and, and back from yourself. So for example, I shared with you guys a behind the scenes of the chaos that ensued on my, I don't know, what was it? My Thursday evening of last week where my car broke down in the middle of the interstate. I got to ride in the back of a cop car to, to get uh, to a safe destination. Um, my mom went into the hospital. There's like all this shit going on. Right. And, and I did feel some conditioning come up and I did feel some tears and I would not deny that and push it away. I let those tears come. And then I chose to let them go and not act like not go into a narrative about what all that meant. If I hadn't let myself have the tears and I was trying to deny my feelings about it and deny the shadow that was there or the conditioning that was there, that would have created pressure. That's no bueno. Okay. All right, so lobster link to book stop tool prompt. Thank you, Fevos. <laughs> yeah, and to, to reiterate what Andrea is saying, um, the tension can be spun into amazing things. Exactly. When, when you can stay with the energy, the big energy, and not try to discharge it with like a coping skill or a distraction, and you stay with it, eventually you will hear a command of what to do with it. And your monkey mind might be saying like, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. And you will feel in your system, no, I don't wanna do that. No, 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 no. And you stay with the no until 
there is a clear, all right. And, and sometimes you don't even hear anything in your mind. You just, the next thing you know, your body's moving, right? Right. Like at some point you just stood up <laughs> and went and it's because that was the true move. And you do not need to go into saboteur questioning yourself about it. All right. So I'm feeling like that's a good place to stop for today. As I told you guys, I have like a buttload of notes and stuff that um, I'm, you know, going to possibly get into later in the week. And I am going to drop, a, I'm going to create a resources tab in the guide section for you all so that you have the things that I've referenced, um, including the prompt. And what I will say for right now is do ask your questions. If you have questions about anything from today, do introduce yourself. If you have not already, that is the very first prompt of the entire uh, soiree. And then there are several thereafter and all of it's under the pre-party. And then uh, we are scheduled um, for a live stream again, same time on Wednesday. And if I'm going to do anything tomorrow, I will uh, make an announcement in the group. So for those of you who have been in the pre-party for a bit now, I would love for you to uh, just share your biggest takeaway before I hop off, because a lot of things have been going on in the group with the pre-party. And then even today, I know that gyms are landing for you all. And it is helpful to just name those for yourself in writing. It kind of like solidifies it. And, um, and it's also just good for me to hear, you know, what's landing for you guys. So Andrea says, you mentioned about feelings and in your one post about your car, choosing not to let yourself go there. Is that the same thing as not making the feelings matter? Well, Andrea, I don't remember the exact spot, but what I can say is that I did let myself go there, but I did not want to keep going there. Like I had already acknowledged the shadow and the conditioning. And I think if I know what, like I'm sensing that you're talking about the part where I said I wanted to feel sorry for myself. And that is a very old, like, ancient familiar feeling of more or less being a motherless daughter and I did not want to relive that because I've like I know the conditioning well enough that it's going to create um what's the word it's, it's gonna create like a heavy, woe is me, where's the chocolate ice cream, I'm gonna crawl up under a blanket and be here all day. And I'm not saying that anything's wrong with having ice cream or curling up in a blanket. I'm saying that I didn't wanna do it from that energy because the truth is, that I am always in my power to choose how I respond to events. And I felt my sadness already about my mom being in the hospital and there not being anything that I can personally do to change that for her. So I felt those feelings, but I wasn't going to keep going back and back and back and like in my brain reliving that. So I hope that answers your question. All right, so takeaways, money in hands when I work, I work less now and I have more income, which is a turn on beautiful. Yeah, keep following that. That's awesome. An important takeaway that is landing for me today than previously is around the current reality being a manifestation of thoughts, actions of the past, the time delay. Great reminder to not attach meaning to the current reality and to keep going, exactly. Yeah, I said this same thing to, um, Ray somewhere in the group where I was like, the only thing that would make something a failure is if you quit when you, when your edge was to actually, you know, 
sell something, you know, if he just tried to sell something once and it didn't work and then he quit like that would that would be, you know, quote unquote, a failure because he failed to see the opportunity and the learning that could happen that he could apply again if he had a taste for entrepreneurship. Denise said not trying to get there because I'm here create from this space not to get there but because this is what is hot for me now exactly you're getting it this feels like a big switch for me also that the idea may be hot but once it's here and now it may not be hot and I can practice the no beautiful so Viva said I am allowed to feel my feelings and not make them mean anything more than the change of chemicals they created yes in my body and hold me on my path I'm allowed to have my thoughts and thank them, but not let them mess with my time. Exactly. And not let them mess with your actions or inactions if, if your body is saying to rest. I'm in charge of my baby self. Exactly. I love it. I love your baby self. And I can want the confidence that I can financially do that for me. Exactly. All right. Where there is shame of a mess, there is genius is one of the things that really hit you. My main shame is my money story. Yep. And you know exactly what you got to do. Also letting my current reality mean anything about me. I've been judging it so hard. Yeah. You guys have got to stop judging your current reality. Like you really do. And that might be my bonus call tomorrow. I'm getting a hell yes on that. Even though it doesn't have to be a hell yes. It's just like sometimes the mind and the body like or in agreement and, and my mind is like, hell yes, do that. And my body is like, yes, that's a turn on. I will probably come in tomorrow, same time. I'll post it in the group so that it's an actual official thing. But I think I'm just gonna tell you guys my experience of money and, and what it's like to be here and where I started with money. Um, Julie. What has landed for me so far is, I accidentally hopped around, where'd you go? Is that I recognize and respect my positive feeling in the moment and do know that I have a big should labeled, I should keep working in a field that no longer excites me purely because I need the money for bills and taking care of children, you know, responsibility, blah, blah. Exactly, and there is a beautiful move for you. There is a, there is a move present and alive for you that you can take now, even if you require the income from your current job, I have watched you woman, you can juggle, like you're a creative juggler too. And you can absolutely do what you need to do to move into something that, um, you know, that lights you up more. Natalie, would you say that it's not about resolving the conditioning, but rather choosing a different story to focus on? I have noticed myself stressing about resolving the shadow. There is no resolving shadow. You alchemize shadow when you act in a way that the shadow actually thinks is death because it will kill the shadow, which is an illusion anyway, but it will reveal the, the illusion and that is why it feels like death to the shadow. So whatever the thing is that you think you can't do or don't know or don't know how or any of that stuff, like all of that is bullshit. And if you're not familiar with the four pillars of consciousness, I highly recommend you act like familiarize yourself with those. It's the four main archetypes. Um, not everybody needs that. If you've already kind of explored archetypes and you're, you're not into it, fine, then I just call it conditioning or programming. But I will say that it helped me immensely to be able to catch them when I, when I knew what they sounded like. And it's like, I, I began to differentiate between what is me, me, my higher self, and what is my human conditioning, which sounds like I can't, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know how it just, there's, there's very familiar and it became very predictable and boring as hell once I could identify them so precisely. So if you don't have a, a copy of money games, I do recommend that. So that'll, that'll be in the resources tab as well. Cause it does talk about the four pillars of consciousness and it points to call a TV where we do have some free resources there. What I can say about that is I ran a special for money games. I think it was last week and I don't think anybody really took advantage. Some people went and bought it from Amazon, which was the full price. So that was confusing. 
but I think I will go ahead and extend the special. So through this whole week, the books will be half off. Um, so I think I answered your question about that, Natalie, because yes, you can totally get stuck in your head trying to figure out the next move, which is why I prefer the simplification that I'm sharing with you now. This tantric approach is basically you just being present and not taking it all so seriously, but also catching if it is that you're like actively operating from a place of I can't, I shouldn't, I don't, you know what I mean. Okay, so then, good, Monique's more aware of her no, and also that I was not sure if I was doing things right, but that's all saboteurs, so you don't have to figure it out if it's right or wrong. It's like, is it alive for me now? If yes, move on it. And you are doing mighty fine, that's right. <laughs> Exactly. And you're welcome, Julie. Glad you're here. Okay, so I am going to say goodbye for now. And um, if you haven't introduced yourself, please do that. I would love to see your introductions today. And then you can uh, move into the pre party prompts. And then I will uh, be back with some resources and such. And uh, will announce I'm 99.9% .9 sure I will be back here same time tomorrow. So you can keep an eye out for that uh, reminder as well. So have a lovely day.